Welcome back to the Shipmate YouTube channel, where we talk about all things shipping, e-commerce, and logistics. Today we're going to be talking about a really exciting topic. We're going to be talking about forecasting. That's right, not like whether it's going to snow on Christmas Eve, but how we can manage our inventory more effectively to predict future sales and make sure that we can meet all future demand. Today we're going to be talking about forecasting. This is a topic that I've been asked about a lot lately. And I'd like it if you guys could suggest some more future topics in the comments or even send me a direct message. We love to talk about concepts that are going to help you out and help you grow your Amazon or other e-commerce platforms. Now, when it comes to forecasting, it's not as difficult as a lot of people think. There's a lot of different strategies we can employ, but today I'm going to talk about a very simple one. It's called a moving average. A moving average is not going to fix all your forecasting issues, but it's a great place to start, especially if you're a new or inexperienced seller. The idea behind a moving average is as your business grows, so are your sales. So it's important to make sure that you're not taking an average of all your sales. You're taking an average of your current sales your most recent sales. This is going to allow you to predict the future a lot more accurately than had you taken all your sales data into account. Now, for the sake of simplicity in this video, we are gonna ignore seasonality. If you have any interest in understanding seasonality, learning some of the formulas behind seasonality, please hop on over to the Shipmate blog where we explain that in detail, and we even walk you through a couple examples. Today, we're just gonna focus in on that moving app. So how do we take a moving average? Well, you can take a moving average for any period of time you want. It can be any definable period of time. It can be a few weeks, it can be a few months. It's up to you, and it's up to your business. If you're seeing a lot of growth, you may want to pick a shorter period of time. If you're seeing a bunch of stability, maybe you want to go for a little longer time horizon. But essentially, you want to grab a time period that makes sense. The general rule of thumb that I like to use is I like to focus on either three or a five month moving average. Three or five month moving average, sometimes I'll calculate both and I'll look at those numbers and figure out which one I think is a more accurate forecast based on my expectations for the coming month. But this will give you a great idea of what you should expect to sell on average next month. So in order to do this, what you're going to do is get your sales data out, preferably in spreadsheet format. You're going to go through and look at your most recent three months or five months or whatever time period you selected. You're going to take an average of this time period, which means you're going to take the sales of each month, add those together to get a total. You are then going to divide that total by the number of months or the number of weeks if you decide to go that way in order to get a finite number that should be about what you expect to sell next month. This is going to give you something to base your sales projections off of and this is going to save you a lot of time and money because you're going to be able to have the right amount of inventory in stock. I cannot stress enough how much money is left on the table when an item is out of stock and how much money some people pay in long-term storage fees. This is something we shouldn't be guessing at. This is something we should be taking an average of and trying to utilize that information that we already have to make an educated and professional decision. Once you know what that average is, you want to think of what are the repercussions of both overselling and underselling. If you have a high margin item, Maybe it makes sense to send a couple extra units than what you think you would need. I, for one, like to have a month of excess inventory at all times, just in case, because missing out on a potential sale is very valuable. I would be leaving dollars on the table every day because I didn't have enough inventory. Now, you don't want to go crazy. You don't want to be excessive with your inventory. But sometimes leaving a little bit of a pad there makes sense, especially on a higher margin item. 
if you're working really close on those margins and you need to maximize your inventory management to make sure that you're not paying any long-term fees or that your items are moving and flowing and you're trying to be just in time with that inventory, it might make sense to, you know, work a little closer at estimate or even, you know, shave some of those additional units off the end. But keep in mind you're leaving meat on the bone. Could be better, though, than the added expense of having those units in inventory. So this is where you got to make a judgment call. But essentially, you're going to take that average and you're either going to add or subtract an amount of inventory that makes sense for you as a business. I really encourage you to go to the Shipmate blog, which is found in the description of this video. And on there, we have a more in-depth view of forecasting. We cover all kinds of topics like seasonality. I spell out all the math. I walk you through a couple examples. It's great. Believe me. It's really going to help out your business. Thank you guys for watching the video. Please take a second to like and subscribe. It really means a lot to the channel and it helps to support videos like this. Also, have a happy holidays and we'll see you after the Christmas season. Thank you and have a great day.